first of all, hello, Diana. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you. So the answer to your question it could take a little bit of explaining. So we try to, to take students by the hand in a concept and a technology that we feel is going to have an influence in several aspects of society. So we didn't want to do a very specific educational venture that is only impactful on a, on a very small percentage of professionals. So our, our approach is to try to explain things in a spherical perspective and start from absolute zero. So if, if you, you have the conventional understanding of uh, mathematics, computers, and very basic economics, you will be exposed progressively to more advanced information, which you can explore at your own pace in the free course, and then more specialized information in the actual masters of uh, digital currency. So that being said, uh, the professionals which might benefit more from this type of education right now are the people who are looking for a competitive advantage in their careers and they feel that their industry is going to be impacted significantly by the presence of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. We're trying to give the tools to, to everyone so they can figure out for themselves as uh, blockchain professionals what the impact will be in their line of work so the the job of academia in this sense is to to be more explorative and try to figure out what potential use these technologies will have as tools so uh, understanding how the tool works and how you can make it uh, work to benefit of humanity and in this case to create more uh, robust uh, monetary and payment systems, more transparent uh, chains of trust between individuals who could be on any side of the planet. That's th these are the aspects that interest us more in the sense that we try to understand the limits of this tool and teach to our students how these tools can be used. Now, uh, uh, political and microeconomic perspectives are something that I have to do with how this tool is used. The tool itself is, is just that. It's, it's not any more than that. So this means that trying to figure out exactly what this tool is capable of is, is very important, but we are not going to be in a position to dictate to which direction this tool might, might be used towards. Uh, this is a very, very quickly growing field and there's a very big demand for professionals in this space right now in all walks of business, whether they are developers or whether they are business people and business developers who are competent enough in understanding the business models that dominate this space. And, and this is a fairly new discipline. So there's a lot of businesses being built right now, a lot of startups coming online. A lot of banks, a lot of governments are looking into this technology and they and they could make use of a professional that that has a formal academic education on this topic. So even if they don't want to start their own business and take advantage of the opportunities that, that are out there, even as employees, either in their existing companies or trying to push their career further. They, they could apply for jobs and I believe that they would be considered as highly competent professionals in um, areas where blockchain technology is starting to have an impact. The aim of this course is to provide a, a general framework of education that is applicable as a master's degree, it is applicable to what you already know. So the goal is to make you even better and expand your horizons in this industry. We aim to, to escalate all these disciplines to, to a high enough level so that the, the graduates will be able to choose more confidently if they want to spe specialize even further in this. So uh, the, the general orientation of the MSc as it is now is mostly related to FinTech and the business environment. In 
um, around the uh, September of 2017, we'll be launching another master's degree, but this time it will be on blockchain software development. So this will be far more specialized and this will be for developers who have a, 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 an intense background in computer science and they will be uh, specialized enough to start building actual applications on the protocol of their choice, expanding these protocols further and developing it even further. That course will definitely have uh, a need for a computer science background. So. We will not teach you the basics of how to code, but we will teach you about how development takes place uh, within uh, open source software and how these systems operate, how they are made and how they can break and how they can be, uh, ex how they can exist in as open source software and still remain robust and uh, have as little attack surface as possible. One of the important things in which blockchain technology will be used is already being used, in fact, by us uh, and will continue to be used in the next years is the registration of certificates on the blockchain in a way that will make them fraud resistant and fraud proof eventually. And anyone will be able to post uh, their certificates uh, together with their social media background or in social media sites like LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or anywhere else. And whoever wants to verify the authenticity of the certificate will be able to do it directly with the issuing authority, the university in this case. I see a lot of potential applications, especially, but these are not necessarily related to blockchain. So. Uh, the fact that education is starting to become, to change and evolve as, as we've seen, you know, we do a course and we have 1,700 students on it and the need for education is only going to increase. It's definitely not going to decrease and people will want a more easy to access experience. So I believe there will be uh, a lot of space for improving education further by going into smartphones and going into mobile apps and going into the attention where, uh, where where people are focusing it. So if people are looking at their phones most of the time, that's where education should be. No, no, it don't work closely with any Bitcoin company, any for-profit Bitcoin company. Uh, no, no, we don't. We are working with uh, other universities, several other universities all over the world and we're expanding this because our interest is mostly in research. Now, th this is how the state is now, and, but if, uh, if a company approaches us and wants a specific research on one of the topics which uh, interests them, we are, we are open to discuss this. This one uh, course will remain free because we, we, we see it uh, in, in many different ways. So in one way, we want to display the quality of our courses of the other, the rest of the courses. So you get a taste of it uh, for free, essentially. We want to expand the basic information around this technology to everyone that we can. So this course will definitely remain free for as, 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 as far as I know. Um, and beyond that, we want to expand this even further. So we're examining on how we can do translations in other languages so that it will be more readily accessible for everyone, regardless of the English barrier. So in the last batch, which uh, started in September, we had around 100 uh, Spanish speaking students from around the world. So this this covers uh, Latin America, Spain, Portugal. So in the beginning of the course, we saw more interest from uh, English speaking countries. So the US and the UK and some parts of Europe. But as we're moving further, because this is, this is the sixth time that we did this uh, free MOOC, we're seeing the, the population increasing from other countries as well. And we're taking this as a very encouraging sign that uh, there's interest 
in other languages and in other parts of the world as well. And we, we expect to see an even, even bigger increase as time passes. 